We feel like everybody is in a talent war these days because you are competing against every other employer in the world every day, it seems like. So there's none of this sticking with a company for 20 years just because you feel you have no other options. All of our employees have other options. All of our employees get called by headhunters on a regular basis. In the old days of IDEO and of many consulting firms, what we used to do is the client would give us what they call a brief, which is the description of the problem that they want to work on, and we would kind of go in the back room. We would go away from the client, sometime for weeks or months at a time, and work on the, the brief, and then we'd present an answer, or maybe a range of answers, but the work was ours, and we were kind of sharing it with the client near the end or at, at milestones along the way. And now we think that's kind of an old-fashioned model, probably an outdated model, because in that model, you have to then do the handoff to the client, and sometimes the, the DNA of the client organization rejects your idea because it, it, it's not culturally a fit with the client organization or something. Whereas what we do now is what we call radical collaboration, which is we work with the client through every step of the way, even when the process is messy. And so when you do it that way, one, the client has lots of input to the process, but two, there is no handoff at the end because the client owns the ideas. In fact, sometimes the client f feels like they came up with the ideas, not us, and we don't care. We want to change the world a little bit. And if working closely with the client in this very close collaboration allows more of our ideas to get implemented and carried out in the world, then everybody's happy. So what we do at IDEO and what we would recommend to, to lots of companies is we have what we call global practices. So we're not, we're not s tremendously hung up on geography. So if a client is in Chicago or if a client is in uh, Frankfurt, Germany, say, um, we, we don't feel we have to serve that client from the people who live within 100 kilometers of, of the client organization. We're trying to find the best in the world within our firm or even outside the firm to, to apply to that process. And so you take a kind of a global look at staffing project work. You know, this is the way the, that great movies work. You don't just say, well, who do we have in stock, right? We want to, we want to make the, the best film ever made. We don't say, well, I got two people, let's use one of them. You, you search the world and say, who, who could I possibly get? There's also the question, who could I possibly afford? Right, but you, you're trying to get for that movie, you're trying to get the very best, the, the most talented person that you can afford and that you can attract and that's available to, to work on your film. And so we think that film model is applicable to companies. Not just like, who do I have? I have to use Bob because Bob's the only guy around. But who can I attract? Who can I, who can I get from one of our other offices? Who can I get from the, the resources of the world that are available to us to, to work on this project? And so it's a, it's a more global perspective on resourcing as opposed to feeling like you're overly constrained by geography. And if I look 20 years in the past at IDEO, what I see is a, is a constant evolution from very uh, discrete engineering-based uh, work to specifications to this much more amorphous, multidisciplinary approach where we're working with the client on, on bigger problems. And so if, if I try to look 10 years into the future, I would see uh, an extrapolation of that trend to where we're, we're using design thinking, the, the mental processes we, cr we created or we, we, we exercised by doing products and services and now applying them to more global issues. You know, how can you make a country more innovative? How can you deal with issues of poverty in developing countries using design thinking? How can you improve the school system using design thinking? How can you, you make more ecologically sustainable products and services? And so that's what I imagine us doing is working very collaboratively with organizations of all kinds to address bigger issues than what's the next product or service. In my mind, there is no conflict between the idea of innovation and the idea of back to basics because sometimes the biggest innovation you can bring to a market 
is simplicity. So for example, alarm clocks. We've been building feature after feature after feature into alarm clocks for the last 20 years. No one can program the alarm clock in their hotel room. You know, you look at Apple, one of the most innovative companies in the world, according to the Boston Consulting Group of survey of people on that subject. And Apple, you know, do they have the best MP3 player in the world? Maybe not, but they've got the most popular, they've got the most successful, and a big part of why that product is so successful, in fact, Apple's entire product line is so successful, is simplicity. They, they haven't loaded it with features, they've made it so you can turn it on and enjoy your music. And so, yeah, that's kind of back to basics, but in its own way, it's innovative, and it's been very successful for them. In the old days, we used to say the CEO's main role is to maximize shareholder value. And I would say, how do you maximize shareholder value today? In the long run, it's about innovation. Sure, there's, there's this quarter's results, but if you want to stay in your career for months and years to come, uh, I think that's about managing innovation. And, and I don't see that in conflict with uh, trying to manage operations and things like that. It, it, the innovation is the, the executive's role, it is the manager's role today.